<laughs> Welcome to another episode. My name is Ab. The channel is Time for Clocks, Amateur Clock Repair Reveal History. Now, this is episode two in my little repair series on the antique Japanese Sekosha wall clock. The last episode, I took the case apart as much as, well, I didn't take it all apart, but I took most of the constituent pieces off and took the movement out. In this episode, we're talking about the movement here, so I just want to say that when you're dealing with the mainsprings, always think of power, because springs, when they're compressed, they have power. And if something breaks, they can, you know, explode unexpectedly. I'm not saying that they're gonna throw you in the air at 50 feet, but they have the potential to let go and whatever they hit is gonna be in whatever is there in the immediate vicinity. That's why some clocks, the springs break and their springs are so strong that gears and things are bent. So, eye protection is a must. Some people like to wear gloves. I find gloves a little tedious when working with things. They interfere with the way you uh, feel, but and also, <laughs> the blue gloves that you wear, now because of the COVID academic, there, epidemic, there's a shortage of, worldwide supply shortage of those gloves. And they're now $20 or more a box. So if you're working with chemicals that can be absorbed into your skin, wear gloves. Otherwise, other things, dirt and so forth, you can wash your hands. That's what I do. So, uh, and again... The way I do something isn't necessarily the way it is supposed to be done. I'm just showing you how I do it. How you do it, that's up to you, but you should always try to learn the best way from professionals before you do something and because you're undertaking all the risk upon yourself. <sighs> I'm not a professional. So this is so basically this video is entertainment purposes only. So Let's get busy with looking at this movement. Thank you. I want to say first off that, you know, some people, they might not know how clocks work, but basically the two springs, this is time and strike. When the clock strikes the hours, the wheels on this side are what deliver the power from the main spring all the way up to this little fly governor. So generally you can tell which is the uh, strike train, they call it because of the train of gears that lead up. This releases the count wheel and that and then the power you see the flywheel spinning around and then the the hammer will strike. So that's the strike side. And the other side is the time side. So the main spring here delivers the power all the way up to this point where when the pendulum goes back and forth it controls the release of the power one tooth at a time on the escape wheel. Now a lot of these uh, some of these gears might look similar and for an amateur it's easy to get them con confused and put back in the wrong place so what I like to and because this movement is really dirty what you can do to help yourself is put down two towels and you can even use a marker and put uh, an S for strike and a T for time and everything you take off on the time side put here everything you take off on a strike side put here and then when you clean them now a professional of course they'll put everything together and clean it all and take it up take it out and put it back in but for an amateur, a lot of that can be confusing. So if you separate the components into little areas where they go, it's easier to put them back uh, when the time comes for that. So that's what we're going to do. You could even make a third one for things really like levers and odd bolts and things like uh, nuts, what have you. You can, uh, you can do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Just looking at this movement, uh, initially, I can I can see it's gummed up. I don't know how many times it's been worked on, and it's 
life, but from the movement plate and a lot of this plating gone, it looks like several times. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take out the uh, suspension spring. The suspension spring is here and it goes through this slot in this post and usually it lifts right out but if the if the post is closed let me get my glasses yeah that won't lift through there but the suspension spring has a little piece of brass in in the end of the wire to keep it from slipping through the post see that see that the uh, has a little piece of wire there so we just want to bend that out See, there's a little hole there, so they just, in the, end, in the end of the suspension spring, there's a little hole. They just put a piece of wire through and bent it up, and that keeps it from going through. So, we just want to bend that back. Sometimes you can just use your fingers, because the wire is very uh, thin. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just put my fingernail in there. On one side. Okay, there it is. I just uh, opened up one side and it just fell down into, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can see how small that is. It is super tiny. So it, so it just goes through this uh, slot. Now this will pull through, see? And then the suspension spring, you can pull it straight through the uh, crutch if it fits, it doesn't fit, so let's pull it the other way. Turn it. And it just lifts out. <clears throat> Anyhow, there's the uh, suspension spring here and rod. And then the pendulum hangs from that. It's kind of a unique design. It's flat here instead of just rounded like the American ones. So when Hattori said he made improvements of the Western design. That might be one of them. By the way, if you have one of these little Sekosha wall clocks, from the end of the sus suspension spring to, it uh, looks like four inches. Four inches, so that's the, uh, if you're missing one of these in a clock, it's handy to know. See how that see see how that's running? That means it's getting power from the from the spring. So, as long as there's power in the springs, there's potential for danger when you take this apart. So the first thing I'm going to do is wind up each arbor and put this retaining clip on the spring. Now, you can use the key. I don't suggest it because when you're winding it, if you don't have a firm, uh, uh, it turns to the left. Interesting. What about this one? It turns to the right. Okay. Some sometimes they turn differently. They both turn towards the center. To the left for the time. To the right for the strike. But when you wind with this key, if the if the click when you hear that clicking sound, if if that click that ratchet. If that breaks, this is going to spin around super fast. And if you don't have a firm grip on this, these wings, when they spin around, they can take the flesh off. So I use a uh, letdown key, and apparently it's a number uh, six. It has interchangeable bits. So you just put that on. And then when you're tightening, if it does happen to uh, the click breaks and the ratchet, and it just starts spinning you can control it it won't it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt you so we're going to fully wind this and as it winds you can see the click well you can't see it from there but but the click is right in here it's right there
you only have to wind it up to the point where you can get your clip on it. Some clips are smaller, but I only have this size, so I hope this size will fit. See, I, I put it through the bottom part here. You just put it through, and then you turn it like this as you continue threading it through and see how it goes around the other side. And you want it around this sh where the shaft, the pillar shaft is, where the loop, where the spring loops on. You just kind of want that in between the. Uh... Oh, let's see. I got to wind it a little more. It's a little, it's still a little too big. Look at all that gunk. Okay. Okay. Now you see. Now, now that fits on there. So, so now that it's on there, I'm going to try to hold it in about the middle and I'm going to release the click, which means I'm just going to uh, push on it a little bit with a screwdriver. It's very hard to see in here and I don't know how to give you the best angle. See, this is the ratchet wheel and the click is right behind it here. So basically I'm going to turn this to take the pressure off the ratchet, which means I'm got like I'm winding. So I'm going to turn it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to push on that click. And there's a spring that keeps it. Sometimes you can dislodge the spring. And maybe I can do that. Well, oh, there we go. Okay, you could do that. Okay. Okay, we're going to do we're going to do it like this. Okay, usually you can release the click by pushing on the uh, click itself but in this case I'm gonna try see here's the spring right here this is the end of the spring that goes around and puts pressure on the end of the click so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pressure off the click and then I'm gonna push this spring see that see how it moves I'm gonna push it now this should spin around. Yep, see? Now that's going to spin around freely because the spring isn't applying any pressure to that click. So you don't always have to push on the click. Sometimes you can just release the spring. And in this Japanese clock, the spring is a little bit different. And now what I'm doing with my hand... Okay, it's kind of a wonky angle, but I only have <laughs> one hand free. I just want to see what I'm doing while see I'm gradually letting this go I'm not just letting it spin like a crazy thing so what the spring is doing is expanding while I'm doing that and my retaining uh, spring has fallen down has fallen off so I need to wind it back up actually so I'm just gonna do that without re-engaging the click and just push this back up. There we go. See? See, now that clip is in the middle. And I'll, now I'll go back to releasing and just letting this kind of unwind by itself in a controlled manner. That's how you do it. And what it does, it just fills up until it, the spring doesn't let it expand anymore. I mean, the retaining clip doesn't let it expand anymore. And now. But because the power of the spring is now contained in the clip, it can't expand anymore. Now the uh, escape wheel isn't going because there's no power. So that's one way you can, well, of course it was not running in the first place. You might not be able to tell. But the fact that the spring is in the clip, that's good enough. We'll do the same to the uh, side. So I'll just keep doing this, contracting the spring until, there we go. See, now you can put it in there. So. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> now sometimes the springs on one side or the other are different lengths. So it's good to keep those separate also. Push the spring off of that retaining clip. Which is, I actually like the way they do that. Okay. So kudos for Japanese design so far. And keep this half this clip up halfway as it expands as I let this go it's gonna okay there we go so you can kind of hold it in the middle if you want 
just don't get your finger in there. You'll get a pinch. Okay. Okay. So, there you go. It's expanded because it doesn't turn anymore. All right. So there's two mainsprings with the uh, retaining clamps on there. So the power is considered taking taken off. There's no power uh, force being applied to any of the gears now, and the movement plate can, and everything can be safely removed. Okay, we got the new battery in. Uh, oh, my uh, screwdriver's not demagnetized. I can feel that. So I want to demagnetize my screwdriver. But anyhow, the hour pipe and the minute shaft connected to this gear down here, these are called the motion works. They refer to, because that's the motion in the clock that you see on the dial, the hands turning. So when they talk about motion works, that's what it is right there. Now before you start taking everything apart, or before I do, it's good to take a lot of pictures, but since I'm on camera, the, those will be my pictures. Or I can use my, you can use your phone to see where all the gears go. See? It's good to know where everything is. So when you put it back, well hopefully it was already in the correct position. Some of the levers and the way the springs wrap around the post, those can be a little tricky. So be sure to get good pictures of those. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is um, this piece here that hold there, this verge assembly, it's held on by a pin and this, this piece here, it goes over the end of the pin so that uh, this won't come off. So typically those move like that, they're just held on with tension, see like that? And it, and it goes right over the end of this uh, pin. So now that that's moved, this, well, I think it needs to be moved all the way down. So let's just put it all the way down. And then this should come off. There, see? These are called the pallet faces, the ends, the ends of the uh, bridge where they contact the escape wheel. Okay, this is called the crutch. See that? Suspension rod passes through that. We'll put that aside. Okay, I think the time has come to take off the pillar nuts. Pillar nuts are the nuts here, which hold the movement plate onto the post. Usually there's four. So I'm going to use my uh, flat nose pliers because one of these nuts is a different size, which happens. Otherwise you can use a nut driver. This one is loose, so you can just spin that. And uh, nuts are easy to lose, so I'll put them in here. Now this had a little wire, the uh, the count wheel advance rod here has a little wire that goes around that, so I want to make keep make note of that because that's where that goes, and then just slide it off. See. All right, now I'll just uh, go around and take these nuts off. Now I don't, now somebody see all the scratches here? When you put this on, I don't go all the way down. I leave it up a little bit so it's not contacting the plate. That way when I turn it, it's not gonna scratch. So I go d bottom out all the way down, pull it to up just a little bit, and then I turn it, and that one is fairly loose. So, there's another one. 
Now this thing is so dirty that I'm not worried about touching it because my fingerprints are not going to do anything to this except get my fingers dirty. And there's one more pillar nut here. Okay, so there were five pillar posts. One, two, three, four, five. Now, this top plate now should lift straight off. And this, this will come with it. But everything else should go through the holes. So let's hope for the best. There we go. Okay. There. Okay. There it is. The top plate came off. The escape wheel assembly came with it. Now we can take that out carefully. You can see all the rust on that. I think you can see it. See that? Could be dried oil too, not certain. Okay, that goes on the time side over here. Okay, this count wheel here is supposed to move freely. I mean, it's not supposed to spin around 60 miles an hour. It's just supposed to move around freely. And it's held on with this clip. And this clip has a, has a little notch. This clip goes into this notch here. So you just raise the end very, very carefully. So you just, you just uh, go in very, and raise that up just a little bit. Okay, so it, doesn't, it doesn't need to come out far, and then this will slide. So I'm going to push this retaining washer this way with my fingers at the same time as I lift up on that tab. So lift up, push, see, it just came off. And now I can pull it out the rest of the way. It doesn't need, this is very delicate. You don't want to be bending on this thing. So that's a, that is a tension, some type, I don't know what the proper term is. I could, I could look it up, but. It, it just applies a slight down pressure to keep this wheel on. So let's set that aside. And then this wheel, this count wheel, when it comes off, you look at this the side that was touching the plate see all that grease and that's how you know which direction it goes back on the side that's smooth that's the side that's been rubbing on the plate so it just goes on like that and then you just put that washer in you just do it in reverse and the end the little tab on the end goes in a little hole that's all there is and if the and if this is too loose if this is too loose you can slightly bend this a little bit and then when you put it on it applies more downward pressure and it'll keep that from being too loose okay set that aside so now this plate I'm not going to take anything more off of this plate this is riveted on these are riveted on so everything else, and this this moves back and forth. I'm, I'm not going to take that off either. Okay, getting back to the movement, I'm I'm very glad here that everything didn't fly apart because I can get a good view now, and you can of where everything is supposed to be. So if you have a Japanese Seikosha clock, it should follow a similar design here wall clock that is old older one okay so when you put it back let's try to make it look like that and we should be all right we the the escape wheel goes here which i took off i'll just go i'm just going to go in reverse this one comes out and it goes up on the blue towel directly below the escape wheel okay the next one. Okay. 
Just a little gentle upward motion, that's all. Next is this one. This just see this just slides over the top the hour pipe slides over the top like that but we're just going to take the whole thing out together and then we can separate it later see? but you can see how the when it strikes the gong, this 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 pin hits it, and that's what makes it go. I probably should have detached that wire there first, but we're going to uh, take this main wheel off and just lifts straight up. So let's get it out of its bushing down there. Slide it aside, and then straight up. Okay. Put that on the time side. This fly governor just comes straight up. Okay. And then you have this wheel here. Sometimes more than one wants to come out. And now this lever can come straight out. I'll disconnect the wire later. But I just want to get it out of the way. So this one is the next gear, and then this big one, and now this main wheel for the strike train should just lift straight up, see? Okay. Now you can use pliers, you can use tweezers, whatever. Now, you can use your fingers. This first one is looped around this post and it'll just lift straight up. You can see that, it'll just lift straight up. So you know this is on the outside, so it can only go in this way. So let's put that aside. And this one over here, That one also wraps around the post, so you just kind of pull that up. And that's what that one looks like. This is near the escape wheel, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that over on the time side. Or you could just put all the levers together. But if the lever closest to the time side, you put on the time side. And the one closest to the strike side, if you put on this, if you save it with the strike, then you know a little bit better how to put them back in. And the last, the last piece is the striking lever. I'm just going to pull it straight up. There's a lot of oil there. I'm just going to pull it straight up. And I can feel the tension on that wire, so I'm just going to pull it. And it, and it wraps around. Oh, that's why. Wow, it's a really long one. So, we just want to dislodge this wire like this. Okay, and then this should come out. So there's the striking hammer. plate itself there it is dirty now I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'll show you an overview of what's here so there's actually not too many parts when you break it all down like this and as an amateur as a beginner as a learner I might clean the movement plates and then I might clean the time side put them back and then the strike side and put them back so that I don't confuse anything. Then, as time goes by and you work on other projects and you have confidence and so forth, 
you can put everything together in a big basket like the like the pros do that's just how I do it or if you have a photographing memory that might help as well but we're not quite done because the springs need to come off of these wheels so let's take the spring off if you want a good tutorial on using a winder uh, Bracken Clockworks he did a nice he did a nice demonstration on Ollie Baker style winder this is my homemade winder so I'm gonna start with the um, the strike side first and usually when you're working with springs you want to wear gloves and safety glasses definitely so the loop end just goes on this post and this end goes in the little hole here so okay that's a little high so I'll put that in the next lower one hopefully that won't be too low okay that works okay you just want to keep keep that in there and then I move this here I use the same key from my letdown tool just slides right in and uh, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna tighten this up take the clamp off the retaining clamp off and then let the spring expand and uh, remove it from the arbor okay I have my glove on it's better to err on the side of safety okay trying to keep my arm out of the way of the camera it's tricky See if I let go, it'll stop. So that's uh, kind of like a safety. Okay, now the clamp is free. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now it's free. And now I'm gonna reverse the ratchet here. And I'm slowly gonna let this unwind and expand at a controlled speed here, see? Sometimes if a spring is gummed up, it doesn't quite expand as it should. Okay. Okay, there we go. I'm just kind of coaxing it. See, I'm doing this. years since this is unwound okay now I'm gonna pull this yes, I jammed it on there too there we go see and then this will all come out now the wheel is held on just a little clip in here that catches a hole in the end of the spring it's a little stud so when this is wound up it grabs it grabs into the spring and it pulls it around as it you wind it up so what you do is it goes this way to tighten it so you want to go the opposite way you just turn it in reverse let me take this off of here see when you wind up the spring it it pulls the spring so what you do is you just turn it in reverse. So sometimes you can just, yeah, this little fussy, hold the coils. That might be loose, I'm not sure. There we go, see? So then it comes out. Now, let me set the spring down. So now we're gonna take a look at this Japanese main wheel. And it has this kind of like a, what is that? A protective piece on there. But you can see how the, see this is the click. Wow, it has, it's very interesting. It has a, a hole in the end of the click that the spring, that the spring actually slides through in the click. See that? So it's like one, see that? The end of the spring goes through a hole in the click itself. See, and then when this, all you do is there's a little, there's a little tab here. You, the spring goes over that. And now when you turn this, the, 
see it has the ratchet action with the force and tension from the spring on the click, it, click itself that interacts with the ratchet wheel and on the other side that's the part inside the spring that you don't see but there's that little there's that little that little piece that grabs the end the hole in the end of the spring in this part okay I'm gonna do this to the other spring and then that sh that's that should be it for this session here's this here's everything that we took that it was taken apart and these springs they actually didn't look as bad as I thought they were now that this corrosion here which I thought was rust it could be rust I haven't looked at it closer it also could be dried oil that has sometimes it has a reddish hue to it but the spring actually doesn't look bad I'm, I think these are replacements I'm not an expert so I don't, I'm not sure if that spring is considered set set meaning it doesn't have the elasticity that it used to have or the springing ability or the ability to expand that it once had I don't know you can leave you can leave something in the comment and let me and tell me if you think this spring is set and this one this one is a little more spit see how these uh, the circles are a little more concentrated here they're more compressed that's a sign that it's uh, set but I, I'm not I'm not certain all right well I hope it wasn't too tedious I know for advanced person this will, this will seem like baby steps but I hope it's helpful because a lot of people are learning clock repair on their own they want to repair clocks that have been in their family or that they come across it's a nice hobby so it can be very daunting taking a clock apart of course putting it back together that's that could be even more daunting and I whew, I've had troubles in that area too but segregating the parts as you take them apart and filming and taking pictures that's a uh, very helpful when you start to put them back okay so anyhow feel free to leave your comments I learn from the people that leave comments every time I have a video uh, Troy a new subscriber he left a comment that that label on the back of the clock that I showed all in Japanese he said that was a warranty label from a clock repair shop indicating that this clock was cleaned and serviced December 1st 1935 a clock can run a good while before it needs cleaning and servicing usually every few years but back in the day maybe 5 10 15 years sometimes clocks just go till they stop and then people take them in for a, a servicing but I still think this clock between 1900 and 1920 I think that's when it was made I'm leaning more between 1910 and 1920 now who knows it's a good guess I think uh, again if you're if you know about Japanese clocks please leave some info myself and others I'm sure would enjoy seeing your comment I think the next step that I need to do is cleaning all these parts or working on the case we'll see all right we'll see you next time i hope everyone stays safe and take care bye for now